Okay, I'm going to church in a few minutes. Let me do this before I go. The authority of the believer. Isaiah 45 verse 11 says, Command ye the work of my hands. This is a very powerful verse, but most it, it's from the King James Version. It, in most translation that I've read, it kind of waters it down. But the King James say, God said to you guys, to you and I, command ye the work of my hands. That means ask of me, demand, command. <laughs> this is very bold. But the, really the Bible is very bold, but we, because of our, we're not sure of it. Actually, if you have the Holy Spirit, you can really define, you can really understand the Bible in your own way, in your own context. We don't need a really spiritual person to teach us. We will know. Paul says, test every spirit. If it conforms to the general spirit of the word of God, you're okay. So like I said, there are many versions of the verse. All of them seem to dilute the meaning. We still have the notion that God will miraculously intervene in our lives and in the lives of others, or he will use some giant of a man to perform his saving acts in the world. Many versions simply say, ask me, but the King James Version says, ask me of the things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. I mean, it's you. It's speaking to you and I. It's not speaking to another person to do the work that needs to be done on earth. For some reason, we are so timid. We attend a church with a timid pastor, and our lives are ruined because of his timidity. We become timid Christians, only praying that God's will be done. But what is that will? It is clearly saying what do you want to see happen? Command the Lord regarding it. God has only you and I to do the things that requires to be done on earth. All that we need to accomplish any task has already been given to us. We do not understand the authority given to us. We do not understand the authority that has already been given to us to wield, to use in the work of the kingdom on earth. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said as he ascended to heaven, I have been given complete authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And be sure of this, I am with you always. His presence is with us always in the Holy Spirit. The power and authority given to us is now given, given to him, is now given to us. That That is huge. You know, we just have to sit down and think for a while. It's been given to us. Why are we still so timid? thinking that somebody else should do this for us. Matthew twenty-two twenty-four. 24. Your problem is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. I think our pro problem is that we do know the scriptures and we do know the power of God. But the disconnect is that we are not aware or we, we refuse to think that it is for us, you and I, simple people, to empower us to do the work that needs to be done, to perform with success and victory. Because the earth is the Lord and everything therein. We are intimidated by big, strong people, angry people, people who would deny that the Bible is the word of God. I, I know it every day. It's, it's frightening. It's, it's not easy. But, be, but know that all power and authority has been given to you and that it is yours to wield, to take back this world for the Lord. 
So the task really is to inform every believer that we have authority as believers and authority and power that was given to our Lord Jesus as he ascends to heaven. He loved the Father and was obedient till death, even death on a cross. So his work on earth is completed. He returns to his glory with the Father, but not until he has handed to us to continue the work on earth and has given the authority to empower to us to do so. Ephesians 1.23, the fullness of him who fills all in all. That means we are filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. There, there is nothing in us that is lacking. He is in us. So our duty is to draw near and access and accept the fullness in us to perform the task before us. And also Ephesians 1, 3 says, In nothing do we lack. We have been given every spiritual blessing. So instead of just praying, thy, thy will be done, what is that will of God for you on this earth? Are you worrying about something in your life? Unsafe members of the family, we all have that. I know, I, I, I hear their vehemence when, when you speak of the Bible to them. I, I, I know that firsthand. We were all raised in the church, but for some reason over the years, a few of us have left and not just become cold, but really vehemently denying the word of God. It is, it is very troubling and very heartbreaking. I know that. And on top of that, we have the world on our shoulders too. We see, we we see people leaving. When even with the church, we see many things that we that not just that we don't don't agree, but that is not in line with scripture. We all know what we mean. I mean by that. And it is disheartening. But let us take courage. Let us encourage each one of us in the word of God to know that this earth is the Lord and everything therein, that the victory has already been won, even as we get on our knees to pray for the unsaved, for the lapsed Christians and all. Let us take courage that the victory has already been won and we have to be faithful to continue to do, do the work in, and to look at the life of our Lord Jesus on earth. He faced opposition too. It's not like he didn't. So much opposition, so much hatred that they would send him to the cross to crucify him. But it was the victory of God, knowing that the wisdom of the world is foolishness. And to them, the wisdom of God is foolishness, not knowing that it is the power of God, that he rules, he reigns. It is his world and, and he will win out in the end. And I hope that this has encouraged you. Thank you.